The new Scottsdale. The new Scottsdale. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they call it? That's what the realtor told me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, everybody, I'm, uh, I'm Mike Jones. I've given this uh, presentation to... Um, code camps in Arizona and California, and this is my largest audience, honestly. <laughs> so I'm pretty impressed by that. But um, I thought, you know, why not give the parole mongers a shot? This is um, everything's based on parole here. I've, I've been a parole monger myself since '95. So, um, so um, hopefully, I can be more familiar face around here. But um, so since 1995, I've been uh, responsible for uh, monitoring of IT, critical IT infrastructure. And it's, it's gone from satellite to microwave. I've done uh, copper and fiber backbone. Um, I've also done broadband services, router switches, servers, applications. And um, one thing I haven't come across yet is an application that will give me all the availability and performance statistics that I need at a single glance. And of course, that's a that's not very a uh, modest proposal. It's um, pretty fanciful, as a matter of fact, to, to think that you can do something like that. So it leaves a lot of companies having to maintain a, a federation of different tool sets to monitor, say, um, something specific for their server environment another specific for their storage environment, their network environment, another to collect all the logging events from all these systems. And uh, so when a problem arises, you have these, these IT folks having to scramble to log into all of these systems, move from application to application, window to window, trying to come up with a, a root cause, determine what's going on. And it could take a lot of time. Um, the last couple of years, I've been working on a, a different type of monitoring technique, um, and that's what I, I would like to present to you here. It's not um, original, it's not groundbreaking, but it's something that I think has given me more, yeah, more availability and performance statistics at a single glance than any other tool I've seen before. So I just prepped a, a short. How's that? I put it on your hair. The clip on your hair. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, even that's not going to work. Right. Must be my weird shaped head or weird shaped ears. <laughs> so I, I just put together a quick uh, three minute video on uh, what IT Sentinel is all about. So if you can focus over here and not here, <laughs> we'll um, check it out. There is some music to this, but it's a little cheesy, probably. I'll give you a copy of it for YouTube.
So uh, that was the uh, presentation. Thank you. <laughs> it's more impressive with the music. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll give you a copy for YouTube. Yes, go ahead. What does it do? I, I couldn't. There was so much going on. I couldn't. By the time I finished reading the text, I couldn't. The, the picture was gone. I, I apologize. So, so some of the presentation was trying to depict. What it does is it takes. It's an. It's a. It's a agent-based monitoring system. So you put agents on servers, workstations, and uh, what shows up for a specific enterprise, this in case uh, XYZ widgets, what, sh what shows up is your agents reporting in their information, the free disk, free memory, any sort of statistics that you want to put into it. And as you can see here, it's not just for IT. So it can be for uh, manufacturing, robotics, telemetry, or uh, generators, or cooling and heating systems. but of course, um, I'm presenting it here to Perl mongers because I think it can be on par with SNMP or Syslog. I think that agents can port or, or send their information to the IT Sentinel server and present these elements here. Um, in the case, every common agent that has a common enterprise, the minus E switch you see here, can report to a single company or on that same page. Every agent that reports the same application shows up here under the same major grouping. And then every agent that reports their host name gets populated here, plus all of their info. Uh, the information here is separated in columns, and every column has three elements. The label that shows up, the tabular data, and the graphical data. So you're collecting, a different, you're collecting various sets of data over time. Mm -hmm. From a different different sets of sources. Right. Um, now, I mean, I've, I've got a lot of uh, customers, a lot of clients, a lot of computers, a couple of servers and things. Um, but I mean, I have, what is SNMP? I've never nobody's ever gotcha. explained yep. that. Yeah. Anyway, this, this, I mean, so in this case, you, right? So in case this case, let's say your company was. Um, <laughs> This is going to work now. I think we found a solution. Tape. Maybe. Duct tape. Is it duct tape? Maybe. No. I can't see it. It's just scotch tape. Okay. <laughs> so in this case, let's say you are um, XYZ uh, Widgets uh, Consulting, IT Consulting. Um, you would take an, an entire page uh, for IT Sentinel, and then each of your clients could become a sub category and then each of your clients equipments whether that be uh, that they become um, workstation servers or or routers and switches you could even report multiple pages xyz widgets consulting for acme incorporated then have their workstations their servers their routers their switches everything all appear on this single pane of glass with mouse over capabilities okay, now, at, at, at one point i had a dell server that had a plug on it that said snmp but I don't know what it would plug into it, so I don't know what that is. Well, this is not SNMP. Right, but, uh, but, okay. Yeah, so this is, this is on par with that. But what SNMP is, is an, it's an agent-based reporting technique where if something happens above a threshold or not a threshold or send an informa a little informational thing. The thing about SNMP is that it's reactionary, meaning something has to cross a threshold for SNMP to send an event. And that's where it's sort of a shortfall. In this case, the IT Sentinel agent sends all the information, whether it's good or bad, once a minute. And you've got up-to-the-date information here on this website. So it could be temperature, it could be fan speed, it could be... Anything you want. Wind speed, it could be any kind of telemetry Right. Or because really, what are you doing? You're only populating elements. A label, the tabular data, and the graph for each column. And you can populate that with whatever you want. I tried at one point installing a free software system called Zabbix, which mm -hmm. I got to work. But, and it, it would do this same kind of thing, but it was just totally mind-boggling and unusable because gotcha. um, it was all bare metal mm. kind of Appliance. Way. So, so what have you got here that separates it from something bare metal like that? Well, for you in particular, I'm a Perl monger, and so the agent is a Perl script. And you can make it a service. Somebody did a service, how to become a demon. Was that you? You can make it a service, you can make it a scheduled task in Windows, or you can make it a cron tab in Linux. But either way, if it runs every minute, and I'll show you some examples where my scripts run uh, eight seconds. Every minute for eight seconds, it'll send this information to the, to the IT Sentinel server and send this information in. 
There's some shortcomings of the IT Sentinel, and I'll, I'll explain that later at the end. Great. What do you think so far? Great. So how, how many levels of drill down? Just these elements here. So when you mouse over, and I'll show you this in a second. When you mouse over, you're only going to see two elements. You're going to see tabular data, or you're going to see graphs. You can have multi-graphs, many graphs, or many, and, and graphs can have many plots. Gotcha. I'll show you that in a second here. Okay. All right. So um, the reason I'm here today, uh, and again, I presented this to um, some Linux user groups and some code camps, but just not getting the right folks. I, I think I need to focus more on the Perl folks. But uh, I'm here today because I think, and, and look, I think that a lot of companies, especially in this economy, they're looking for, um, or they would be very em embrace the idea of having their own internal Perl mongers um, create customizable IT Sentinel agents to either replace or complement their existing monitoring suite. And so I, you know, I'm just trying to get the idea and the technique across. It's again, it's not something that um, is 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 extraordinary here, but it's just a technique. So um, just give you some ideas of what I'm currently doing with IT Sentinel. Um, is anybody here at Microsoft or learn Perl? On, I learned Mar Perl on Microsoft. I have, I have Microsoft. Okay. Have you ever um, administered an Exchange server? Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is, and, and I apologize for the resolution, but I'm limited to a certain resolution because of VGA. These wouldn't be crunching as much. They'd show up in a more natural size. But um, this is a MWM Corporation, their company that I um, do some consulting for. And I only have one server under the Exchange service, but if I wanted to take it on, I would take on all their workstations and I'd show all, all I'd have all their workstations as a service reporting here. I'd have their routers reporting here and their switches reporting here via an agent, probably on the server, sending out SNMP queries and, re and send that here. But uh, what, I, what I have here in the info section for this server is some information that at a quick glance I could send to Dell and say, Look, here's my product ID, 6PN52C1. That's the thing that's stuck on the label in the back of the server. <laughs> or, yeah. or something that you have to go to your bookkeeper to find out. Oh, what the heck is my product ID code? Or looking at Excel spreadsheet. It's right here in the mouse over, right when you know that you're having problems. It also gives you information on each of the CPUs. Uh, last boot time, I know that they screwed around sometime on Friday, August 26th, and rebooted the server just about the end of the business day. Why? I'm not sure. i got to take that up with them. I can't send emails. <laughs> yeah. Here's a uh, CPU graph for the last 24 hours. You'll see that the current time is over here on the right. So 24 hours ago, this is what it looked like. And it, it, currently, I'm only showing 24 hours, but it's customizable, like I said. Um, here I have the disk space for each of the disks, file system free space size, volume name, memory. I don't know why that's, that's normal for a physical and virtual disk. It's kind of weird, huh, for Microsoft to do that? Yeah. This, is a, this is an equivalent of Control-Alt-Delete in Windows. So again, this is a script running once per minute. So I get up to the date, and I'm ordering it here. Again, it's customizable. Whatever you want to do, I'm ordering it by memory size. Um, I can also see if there's any patches that were updated. I know the latest patch here was on 824. And I, I show the last 10 patches when they were installed and what patches they were. You know, sometimes something may happen where you suspect a patch may have caused an issue. This is the most important one. Make sure that all their stuff is being backed up. I back up four items a night. Their uh, members directory, um, the entire doc central directory, and the system in exchange for Microsoft. And it shows when the backup started, when it finished, how much it copied, how much it skipped because, you know, some of it was duplicate information. And then the log file, if you want to look at it and actually see why it may have failed or didn't fail. But this one looked like it went healthy. And this is a really good stuff. Intelligent mail um, filter. My PNG is not coming up, but there's a second graph here that should be. I guess it's not going to pop up. But <laughs> Dang, that was a really impressive graph. Intelligent mail fil filter is the um, last resort in exchange for trying to filter out spam. Um, if anybody's used Intelligent Mail Search Filter, you know it's kind of garbage. 
So I use also remote blacklists. There's a good graph. Okay, so in this case, I can see uh, remote blacklist. There's been 30 rejected emails because the remote blacklist I've configured on the servers uh, think that those are from commie countries or whatever. Good email today, 124. And those good emails were sent to Intelligent Message Filter. And so the total spam ratio, again, this is something I've customized through a Perl script. And all I'm doing is populating the label, the tabular data here, and the graph. I can populate with whatever the heck I want. So here I show that email blocked by RBLs, remote blacklists, IMF, Kapersky, which is the antivirus, or delivered to junk folders, divided by the total mail processed. And I can see the trend through the evening of spam. I like this graph because once in a while you can't trust remote blacklists. If they go out of business or they decide to move their server, change it to a different IP, all of a sudden this thing will spike because that remote blacklist isn't being interrogated anymore. Um, here I got startup um, applications that are running. Anybody looked at the event viewer in Windows? Yes. In most cases you have to log on to the server to look at event viewer. Not in this case. With IT Sentinel, I'm just populating the label with the number of warnings and errors that I've received over the last 24 hours. I give the count, the source, and the description, the first 80 characters of the event. So do you, uh, do you pull with the script out of the format used by uh, the app events, or do, does another service send them to you? No, the script does a WMI call okay. for event okay. viewer, and it lists me. I, I go, since this time, show me all the events, categorize them in a hash, give them a count for each unique one. And, you know, you can see some of these. Um, sorry, I'm going off the screen there, but, again, my resolution is killing me. But <laughs> some of these uh, occur more than once, so I could have two or three events right here with the same description. I'm not going to show it three times. Sure. I'm just going to show it once. Yeah. So I give a like, more consolidated view sure. of my event viewer. Okay. For those of you who are Linux based, this is syslog. And then I have my net stats here, uh, which shows me, please move to the right. Good. All the open connections I currently have at this server. Most of these are internal IPs. The foreign socket is an internal IP, which is good. These external IPs are probably Verizon phones. People are using Verizon phones to look at their, their email and stuff. But I can monitor who's connected to my server. These are open sockets waiting for a connection. I could close these off if I'd like. Again, this is the command netstat minus NA, presented by Perl via IT Sentinel. And the last field I have here is uh, DNS lookups. I have that here in case you have a rogue system that has been hit or compromised. You might see a lot of DNS going, going nuts trying to hack or whatever. But this is normal for an exchange server to have this many DNS lookups per minute. And then... Is all this data database? No, it's not. It's one of the things I was going to show at the end about my things I need help with, things I would like to enhance. So it's all, all flat file. Okay. On the IT Sentinel server, this stuff is being sent via XML. The socket is picking it up, copying the flat file over, and I'm using JavaScript to parse the XML. But all the um, new plot is what's generating these graphs and it's grabbing these things out of a flat file. I'd like to go to MySQL eventually, but um, just need maybe some assistance or some time to do that. And then uh, lastly, before I move on, I just want to show you what I can do, or what we can do with a Linux-based server. It's not as much to show with a Linux-based server. <laughs> this is the IT Sentinel server itself, what's picking up all of these agents. And again, I have the um, information when it was last booted, the information on the CPU. This is hosted at GoDaddy. Disk, CPU, mem, uh, network status again. Of course, I've got a um, port 80 open to this, and apparently your IP address is 98 whatever uh, out of Atlanta, Georgia. OK. <laughs> uh, failed logins. So this is something I, I kind of do to show the in the last seven days, who's been trying to hack in or get in access to my server? And you can see that 6,550 
seven failed access attempts via SSH. Um, the number of uh, agents that it's processing every hour, we've only got three. And the number of graphs that it's generating per hour, and any errors that the application itself, the IT Sentinel application, takes will show up here. So, everybody good? Yeah. All right. So, um, for the rest of this discussion, I kind of wanted to show you if you're unfamiliar with what XML is all about, how we're at the agent level, how we're um, extracting all this information from the devices and pumping it out to the server via XML. And so um, what we can do um, is, oh, I'm sorry, I should have minimized that. A lot of people like this failed logins. When I show that, they're like, oh, I want to do that for my server and find out who's trying to log in. But uh, what we'll do is we'll take this count here of 6,557, this tabular data, and show you how we collect that and then pump it out via XML to the IT Sentinel server from the agent itself. So um, the agent lives here on the IT Sentinel server. And the command that, that is a native Linux command there's nothing magic going on here. It's just a native Linux command that Perl parses is last um, minus not dot. The dangers of copy paste. There you go. There's all the people that have attempted to log into my server. This command is showing you um, something uh, information since April. But you can see this output here has a set number of characters for the username. Even if it's expanded beyond that, it's only going to show you a set number, um, the IP address that it came from, and the day that it came from. So lots of attempts um, to, to go into the server. But here's the bad thing. Um, when you're trying, when a security team is trying to figure out who's hacking or who's trying to make these attempts, this output here is only available to one person, the person that's logged in. By feeding it to IT Sentinel, you make it available to everybody from a single mouse over you can consolidate this information and so um, we execute this script this agent script I'll probably have to put all my dashes oh that worked you guys are all familiar with the debugger Perl debugger so I'm going to show you what this looks like in the debugger but here's the path to my script IT Sentinel in generic EP.pl I'm going to give it some options. The minus E is the enterprise that this agent belongs to. So anything, any script that has a minus E IT Sentinel is going to show up on this page. That's how the server treats that argument. What happened to my command? Good. Anything with minus L67249, that's the license key. And this doesn't cost money. The only reason I'm putting a license in here is I don't want you guys coming in after this meeting's over saying, I hate that guy that presented today, and then posting nudie photos in my tabular data or something like that. So it's a way to um, sort of make sure that you're the one posting the data and not somebody else. And then this minus A server, that identifies that this agent should fall underneath this major grouping called server. I'm leaving fingerprints on your screen. <laughs> So I'm going to enter debug mode here. Those are the options that are needed to start the script. And where I'd like to stop here is um, at line 452. That's about the time where it starts collecting the information that it needs for failed logins. So as we go through the script, it's going to stop here on line 452 for us and show us what it's doing. There we go. There's our command. Last if var log btmp, which is going to show us all of our failed logins. It's going to show us the last 10,000 lines. I got lazy here. I could have said last if seven days ago, but I kind of got lazy there. And I'm going to take out the header. I don't want the header in there. And so if I uh, do next and I examine what the output of that command looks like, you'll see all those failed logins, 10,000 of them, going back a little further than I want, August 13th. But in a second here, I'll show you how we just show the last seven days. 
So um, we're going to parse this output that you see here. We're going to parse this output and send it to a daily uh, failures hash, a daily failures hash. And so um, I'll stop here at line. Four seventy-two, and now I have a daily hash of my failed logins. For example, I could look at the, I could examine the failures hash for all events that occurred on August thirty-one. Anybody wondering what that two is for? <laughs> Did I write that right? All the in the failures. You what? What did I forget? Because yes, thank you. Oh. <laughs> I got to type it again. <laughs> you know what? Why am I not copying? That's why I did this. <laughs> Okay, so this is, oh, I still didn't do it right. Okay, so I'm looking at the failures hash for all events that occurred yesterday, August 31st. Yesterday is two. Today would have been one. The day prior to the two would have been three. Now, I'm doing that because I'm sort of lazy. When, when the month crosses over, such as today, uh, a and S just don't fall right together. J doesn't fall right together. So I'm, so I'm putting a little number in there just to show that I want to sort it order from yesterday to today. But anyway, um, there is all the failed logins that happened from today. 4,821 logins just today. So you can tell from the f the sheer amount of failed logins from the frequency of these logins that these are coming from um, communist rogue countries. Um, haters of uh, the greatest nation on God's green earth. But we don't know from the IP address if they're coming from China, North Korea, or Berkeley, California. We, we don't know that. So <laughs> I'm not happy with just this and pumping that to my IT Sentinel. I want to do more. I want to take this IP address and find out this count where it's coming from, right? And so what I'll do is I'll break at 489 and in the script, it's customizable. I'm doing more than what just, just the log gives me. At 489, I'm going to pump this through a subroutine, uh, a GOIP subroutine, that uh, will give me the, um, the country origin and the CIDR block. And you can see that here, if I look at the current IP I'm working on, um, the subroutine has given me back two arguments, or two variables, the country and the CIDR block. Oh, it has not. i got to continue. I can't just break at 49, I gotta continue. Gotcha. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah, let's continue. Let's try it again. Yeah, it might be there now. Yeah. Okay, so uh, my first IP that I'm, I'm throwing through my GOIP is coming from 187.92. Now that's more friendly. I can figure out now that I've got this guy from Brazil trying to hack into my system. And he's coming from the CIDR block 187.64. Those of you who are familiar with networking, that's a huge block. So that could be half the country of Brazil. The reason this is important is because by getting this information versus just looking at the log, now I can apply this CIDR mask to a, an, an IP table. And I can block that entire CIDR block from my router. I can also apply it to a black hole route on a router or to an ACL on a firewall. So versus just that one guy. I can do the whole dang country. If I don't do any business in Brazil, <laughs> why, ha why put up with this guy's mess, right? <laughs> so I'm going to continue again and just show you one more. Um, see what else we get from uh, GOIP. Uh, another one from Brazil. This time 2016. That's that guy right there. Uh, again from Brazil, a much larger block, a slash 20. 201, so that's, that's the other half of the country. <laughs> I thought they were our friends. I guess not. So um, I've got all my information now I need. If you look at this table, I've got my day. That's in the daily failures hash. I've got my source IP address. 
I've got the country of origin, the source cider, and I've got a count of the number of attempts from just that IP address. And so I'm ready to actually present it and send this off to IT Sentinel. Now here I'm doing this in Perl. I don't have to be doing this in Perl. I could be doing it in Ruby, C. I can do it in any language that supports opening up a socket and printing XML to the server. All right, so um, eventually after collecting all this data, um, we're going to append this into a hash that's specific for column six. And that's what I want to show you right now. I'm going to show you uh, column six and what that currently looks like in the script. I'll break at 4.99 and continue. And I can now examine what column six looks like. Column six currently contains the Mo data. I don't remember if you remember from the slide at the end of the presentation, but the Mo data is the element of column six that contains the tabular data. And it's familiar looking to you. Everybody who knows Perl knows HTML. And this is just an HTML table. It hasn't built all, it's only on uh, Korea, Republic of China right now, but whatever, or Korea, Republic or whatever. Republic of Korea. It's only on that one right now, has yet to build all these other ones. So at this point of time in the script, if we move off of column six right now, I do want to show you what it's built for some of these previous columns at this point of time in the script. For example, column three. By this time, it should have populated in column three the label, which is 0.1 right now, 0.11 right now for the load for the CPU, the tabular data, and the graph. So I want to show you what that looks like in the column three hash. Oops, I just press enter. Interesting, okay. Let's, uh, let's copy column three. How are we doing on time? Am I going over? Oh, I'm good. No, you're totally fine. Nice. Now look at column three. It's got all the elements that IT Sentinel can support. Column three, which I'm showing you right here, the uh, CPU column that gives the CPU for this agent, has the Mo data, which is the tabular data. It has the Mo graph, which is the graph element here. It's always going to show up after the tabular data. And the Mo label, which is going to show up here. And that's all in the hash. Real quick, I just wanted to show you that the graph element, you're familiar with the data elements, just the HTML. The Mo label is just a value. But this Mo graph may look a little unfamiliar to you. What the heck is open graph one, uh, close a graph one, and then everything in between? That's XML. XML means you create your own tags. So in this case, I've created um, IT Sentinel a graph tag. And when IT Sentinel encounters a graph one tag, it knows to throw a graph underneath the tabular data. That graph should contain an open plot tag and a closed plot tag. In this case, we're doing many plots. We're doing the one minute CPU average, the five minute CPU average, and the 15 minute CPU average. And that's what it's plotting down here. And notice that with each of the plots, I'm just setting in an epic time value, and epic time, and a value. So where is all this historical information coming from? That's being saved as a flat file on the server. I'd like to get that into a database. So eventually, with some assistance or some more time on my hands, I'll be able to do that. Now, before we move off of this, because I do want to show you the XML as, when it comes out of this hash, I do want to show you uh, graph four, which, or I'm sorry, column four, which is the memory. This one has two graphs, just as simple. All you do is um, again, you have the Mo data, the tabular data, the graph. I simply open up a, sim a graph one tag with multiple one or more plots, close the graph one tag, open up another graph two tag, one or more plots, and I now have two graphs. So I can support. We can support um, many plots per graph and many graphs on a single mouse over. This comes useful in, say, uh, interface statistics. I didn't do that. But um, you could have error statistics on a graph. You can have utilization statistics on a graph.
there's one more element that I did not show you, and it's not available on this graph, uh, but let me go back to MWM Corp. Is the label alert value, and this can, you can, based on a threshold, make this thing red or yellow, orange, blue, customizable, whatever you want it to be. So uh, my Microsoft server is commonly um, red and yellow, and my Linux server seems to be nice and fine. Actually, I do have it go red and yellow every once in a while. New plot will take an error. I'm still trying to debug that. Every once in a while, I'll take an error. So um, we've collected our data. At this, at this point in your script, we have mo data, mo graph, and mo label for every column. We've given our arguments, and we're, we're now ready to pump this into an XML stream that goes out to the IT Sentinel socket. And I wanted to show you what that looks like. Who's familiar with XML? Has you guys worked with XML at all? Oh. That's why you're snoozing, maybe. Here's my current XML output. It's very small. All it has is the arguments that I provided to the script. XML version 1, blah, 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 blah. Uh, my enterprise name, my open enterprise tag. This, is, this agent belongs to the web page IT Sentinel. It should be grouped under an application called server. And uh, the name of this server is IT Sentinel, and that's where this comes from. You see this time value epoch? What IT Sentinel will do with that is allow you to mouse over and see what the last reported time is. That way, if this suddenly goes red, this column, IT Sentinel will notice and after five minutes that this guy hasn't sent XML in, it'll go red, and you can mouse over and say, OK, now I have a snapshot of my server when it was able to report five minutes ago. or. 10 hours ago, when of the last time you looked at this. And you actually have a snapshot of all this stuff. OK, so it's time to um, look at the, the total XML after collecting all this, what gets sent to the um, IT Sentinel server. But I'm going to quit out of debug, because it's not as pretty as just using the minus P switch. Let me get rid of the debug. Let it run with the uh, minus P switch. And that allows you to just, it's not going to print to the socket. It's just going to print to standard out. And from that XML string that we just looked at that took our arguments, um, oh, yeah. Get a wire. <laughs> did I pull that out? Hopefully not. <laughs> So here's the XML tag I just showed you. We stopped at the server name, IT Sentinel, and the timestamp that gave it last. What the script did is it started appending all the data for column 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way down. And for those of you that aren't familiar with that XML, some of you didn't raise your hands. So um, HTML data has to be protected by this C data stuff. Um, in order for it to not be considered um, XML. So XML, the server will get confused um, if you don't protect your HTML tags with uh, C data. Down here at the bottom, you see we um, close out our server tag, close out our application, close out our enterprise, and we finished a, an XML. This also, the minus P switch, gives you the completion time of the columns. So we know that column 1, 2, and 3 completed in 0 seconds. Took 5 seconds for column 4. What the heck is column 4? Memory. The reason being is because you get that 1, 5, and 15 minute value, you have to sleep a little bit and do some statistics on that. Next one, finish in 5. And, and the failed logins takes a little while to go through GOIP and everything like that. And that stat takes a little bit of while, but all that comes up. All right. Any questions or how we're doing this? With the graphs, are you limited to just two graphs, or can you go to graph three, graph four, graph five? Graph three, four, or five. All you're doing is opening up a graph three tag, putting in multiple plots, closing it, opening a graph four tag. And like I said, I, we, uh, um, I've had some servers, not in this case, but where you have many um, Ethernet connections, and it'll show them all. And then I give error statistics, utilization statistics, and everything with the mouse over. Now the, the problem there is that you sit here and you mouse over, and now you've got to scroll down. Um, the benefit is that it, it, it does have the ability to lock. When I click on it, the thing locks. There are no more mouse overs available. 
and I can just uh, move down and I can copy and paste things or copy the whole screenshot or whatever. I gotta click on this to unlock that table to move off of it again. But yeah, you can support many graphs. The downfall is that it's gonna go over the page. What are you using to, to New plot. New plot. Yeah. So the what what the server will do is it'll take this XML stream, it'll extract the graph XML, and it'll take that epoch and timestamp, send it to a file, and then the new plot will run a, a PNG on it. Right. It's kind of simple. Cool. Yeah. Um so I, I think I can any more questions? I just want to finish on uh, if if you think that you might want to try it out as again a, a replay an enhancement to your current employers or maybe you do it as a consulting if you want to try it out um, the uh, website itsentinel.com um, it's got some feeds there here's the server by the way I, I've, I've added it to my uh, main page so you can try it out but here it tells you again what it's all about why I think it's it's, it's a good idea to try it out um, and here's if you're a Windows guy there's a tutorials how to get started with Windows um, how to get started with Linux and then it provides you sample scripts so the one we just looked at and debugged was um, here in Linux EPs uh, it was the base script Linux um, these are the tutorial Linux, and this is one that I use. <laughs> this is one I use to grade papers at a college. And this, it's a Linux course, so when they do their Linux course, the script, it's an agent on each of their systems, and I go through and I make sure they have certain user accounts and blah, 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 and, and it grades them uh, at a scale of um, 0 to 100%. And they, uh, by having this up, uh, the IT Sentinel page for the class, they can look up and say, ah, oh, shoot, I didn't finish creating my users. I didn't finish doing this. So again, it's not just for IT Sentinel. It's, it's just a label, tabular data, and graphical data. It's available to you right there. All right. Anything else I meant to include here? Yes. One last thing before uh, we go is the template script. the generic template. This basically shows you how it works. And so what it will generate as you scroll down here, it, it hello? Oh, I gotta click here. It gives you a description as to what it does. It says the purpose of script is to familiarize you with the three main sections of good EP code. Pre-code, and that's what builds uh, your options and, and parses your options. Um, the code that you customize all your information. And then the postcode. The postcode is responsible for opening up that socket and sending the XML off. Do, have you guys done socket programming with Perl? Some of you have done socket programming with Perl. Okay. It shows you how to, um, you're probably grinding your teeth at this. This is a cron tab instead of a service. One of these days, <laughs> I'll, I'll work on making it a service, but I could use some assistance in that, right? And then this is what it will it'll create for you. And this, you know, this will say whatever you want, um, uh, give you their graphs or whatever. But again, I break it out into the pre-code. You select all that, copy it. I select all this, copy it. Uh, select it, copy it. Put it in your agent and run it. Hmm. Customize it however you want. So that's it. You guys have any other uh, questions at all? Or? So... These are scripts that run against the server. What's the server built on? The server is a Perl script that listens to the socket. It forks out a process when it gets tickled. Okay. It takes that XML, copies it to a flat file. Gotcha. That's it. Okay. Copies things to a flat file. Okay. What does the work is the Java, the Java code here. As soon as I click refresh, um, in fact, I, I don't hide it. If you do a view source on this, anybody know where view source is anymore? <laughs> Why do they change this stuff on us? You just right click on the page. Thank you. <laughs> view page source. Oh, and, and it's a. It's, uh, anyway, let me debug it for you. This is what's doing all the, the power is the JavaScript that's behind this web page. It's going to that flat file, it's parsing the XML, and it's saying, okay, what's my enterprise? What's my um, what's my application? And show me all the servers that belong to that application. 
And I, you know, I put the debugger in here so I can, you know, try, you know, make sure I don't have any issues. But you know, if I float float over this guy and then mouse out in the debugger, it'll show you um, that it actually rendered that graph, and the time that it took to render that graph is an epic timestamp. So. So you say that you're a consultant and you have several clients using this right now, or? You know, I, I, I have a lot of jobs. I teach um, part-time at the community college, the Linux programs, the Cynix pro, or, or Cisco programs. Uh, I, I uh, work for a, a large, um, I, I can't say it, but I work for a large uh, financial company in, in, the, in the Valley. But yes, I do maintain one consulting job, and um, I, I had a hard time balancing everything. And so this effort was saying, I need a real-time view. You know, the one thing I didn't mention was... Different customers use the same agents, or do, are they always custom for each? I think they should all be custom. I mean, there's certain set columns, memory, CPU, whatever. But for mine, for example, I wanted to parse my log files in the last 24 hours to, to see if I had any errors within my specific application. So if you're maintaining an IIS server, maybe you want to parse the IIS server to see who's hitting and what web pages are being hit. If you're maintaining a SQL server, maybe every once in a while you do a SQL query to make sure that you're authenticating or that you're doing, you're getting the data back from the back end. So most of these sites you're uh, supporting remotely? You what? Most of these sites you're supporting remotely through, through this view? Yeah, so, so how I use it is this. They call me up and I'm teaching. I'm on a break. So I pull up my phone and I look at IT Sentinel. I look at their row and I scroll across and I mouse over and I say, oh, looks like I've got an error in the event log and here's what's happening. So I have a real-time view of what's going on and I don't have to, hold on, i got to log in and VPN in. I gotta open up this and log into here and look at Event Viewer. So I just have it right up my phone. A productivity tool then. Oh yeah. Can make you much more yeah. um, efficient and useful for multiple sites. Yeah, and I hate to say it. I mean, we all like to take vacations, right? But when I'm on a vacation, I can't help but I'm sitting at a bar. And I'm thinking, I wonder how the server's doing. And I pull up my <laughs> phone and I mouse over the CPU. I look, I mouse over, make sure there's the Exchange server is still processing IMFs and RBLs and rejecting emails. If I know it's rejecting emails, I know it's getting emails. So yeah, it's 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 a nice way to say, yep, everything's looking okay. So. They said you can use this or use this too to uh, use, do test scores, test scores for your students. And yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. So my question is, is how abstract is this? Yeah, where I'm working at, I I can see the potential of this to use for reporting real-time data that has absolutely nothing to do with what you're talking about here. Uh -huh. But I'm running tests. Say I'm running a test on something that takes a couple of weeks to run, and every periodically it spits out results and keeps does some more tests and spits out more results. And yeah, it, and it'd be nice to have a, a real live system that shows me what's going on. Yeah, how it's how things are going. So. I've only gone up to the minute at this point, well, so I haven't gone any faster than that. So, yeah, so it, yeah. I'm talking about that so much as just how is it abstractable to, to pretty much present any kind of information. Uh, I would like to um, really stress test it. I haven't seen uh, um, how many agents it can handle at one time and, and report. You know, for example, if I get 100 agents reporting at one time. Is that JavaScript going to be efficient on that one page to show 100 agents and then group them into their verse? You know, is it a server? Is it a router? Is it a switch? Or is it a this sort of data point? Is it that sort of data point? Whatever. I haven't seen it really. Uh, so I'd like to try that. I'd like to see if anybody would like to, uh, to really try to load, load it up. But I, I do know that um, it, it's from my perspective right now, it's based on how fast the agent can send that XML. For example, I don't know if you saw it, but I mean, if I run this uh, in yeah, print, so this has taken about eight seconds. So it's going to report to the XML or the server in XML, and I should be able to do that once a minute at least and get the most top of the minute well, statistics. Speed, I'm, not really speed. I'm just saying that, like, I'm running tests, say, like, like we're testing these flash memories. Okay. Yeah. And well, our test is want to see how they how their performance degrades over time. Mm -hmm. So every time you do an erase, your memory gets worse. So you do a thousand erases, it's a lot worse than it was before. So potentially, every time I erase it and reprogram it, I'm going to do a, an error, a bit error scan on it. Say, so, okay, it's got 27,000 bits or bad now. 
you know, and so I just, every time I do that, I want to report that to something. And then so, so if this could actually do a graph and show me yeah. the error rate, the time, or whatever, that kind of stuff. It could do that. And there's two ways you can do that. How abstract is it in that? I, I, it right. has absolutely nothing to do with monitoring computer systems as it has to do with monitoring whatever it is I'm testing. Yep. Me let's say you have ten of let's say you have ten of these flash modules. You can make each of them a row, mm -hmm. or you could send make the agent pull each one of them individually, and then encapsulate them, so that your graph has ten plots right. with different colors. Yeah. And now, if they're all the same, you know that they're all working properly. If one spikes, it'll show you the name or ID of that flash drive, the one that's spiking or not spiking. And not for open. Hey, if it can uh, support it opening a itself, socket, it runs a test, gets data back, and if it can, yeah, it can open a socket. You're you're so good to go. Can generate it. If you can print to the socket XML, you're fine. Right. So I didn't include Visual Basic on my little. Or you, you should now. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to add that on there. I have a little spot for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're well, pretty much. You can do all the .NET languages. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Good to go. So the, the shortcomings of IT Sentinel, like I said, is flat file. When, when he mentioned um, having 10, well, when I mentioned having 10 different flash drives, let's say you want to go back in history to see how it was performing a week ago versus how it's performing today. I don't have that capability right now. Um, what I'd like to do is pump this into a SQL database so you can do certain queries against the database and pull this data out, historical data. Um, right now, it's a great real-time monitoring tool. How's the Exchange server performing now? And according to the plots, how is it doing over the last 24 hours? Um, I really need to work on uh, more of a data, data, database backend architecture to, to, to make it more historic. But uh, if, you know, again, one of the reasons I give these presentations is I'm looking for assistance. If anybody's willing to, you know, think maybe they want to kick the tires on this, they want to use it, they want to append or add to it, I'll give you the server code. We didn't present the server code today. But I'll give you the server code and run away with it and let me know how you improve upon it and we can add additional releases or whatever. It's Perl. So any questions anymore? I think we're done. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, uh, it, uh, is the server code uh, available? I mean, do we have to contact you directly or, uh, or is it just available somewhere on the site? Though? It's not available on the site, and I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do yet. It's, I feel kind of embarrassed because it's probably not up to par with what you guys would do. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. So this is the service script right here. It forks out a child when it, when it, and it just copies to a file or whatever. And, but, I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely open to sharing this code. I'm not... Um, is that kind of like one of your goals? Is that eventually it'll be a complete package where yeah. like a company takes it and run it all themselves? Yeah. Okay. I, I think SNMP and Syslog are reactionary. I think if, if, if you know, and this is fanciful, but if, if, if Windows and Linux had a service that sent an XML stream and say Red Hat said, well, we want column one to look like this all the time with all of our servers. We want column two to look like this, column three. And they send it to a service on a single server. Then you know you have the capability to have this single pane of glass technique when you go to troubleshoot your entire infrastructure. And I'm not just talking Linux, your routers, your switches, everybody else. Um, I'm not saying get rid of SNMP. I'm not saying get rid of Syslog. I'm saying complement it with this visual that that that's capable with XML, XNMP. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Very good. Well.